Health and wellness are more than a destination. They are a process and a journey of personal choice. Come hear from people out in the field doing the work, bringing health and wellness to many. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today, we're so excited to have Debbie van der Plaas, who is a psychosocial therapist, a neurofeedback therapist, and a health and wellness coach. Today, we want to explore the brain with you and hear about neurofeedback therapy. So you were a psychosocial therapist. How did you get busy with neurofeedback therapy? No, well, actually, I wasn't a psychosocial therapist in the beginning. Okay. Later on, okay. um, I have been studying um, at a technical university. Oh. So I was a real estate uh, management and developer. And I really didn't like uh, my work. So I was looking for something that would f fit me more. Because I was doing my job, but I wasn't liking it because the person I am, yeah. I couldn't um, get myself in the, in the work. That, that person had to be shut down. So I wasn't happy. It wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't fulfilling at all. Okay. And I always had to play a role that didn't suit me. So I was looking for something else to do. And um, I've been searching for like four or five years. What would, what would be right for me? And then I met a man who was a neurofeedback trainer and he told me about it. And at first I was intrigued because my sister was encountering some issues and um, well, it was suited for her problem. So I introduced her to a new neurofeedback trainer in her city and I was intrigued. So I started looking at what is it really? And Finally, I was looking at it and it's like it clicked in me. It's like, wow, this is what I was looking for. I want to become a neurofeedback trainer. Wow. So, so nice. Yeah, and when, when I was growing up, it, the, the occupation wasn't there. So I couldn't fi have found it sooner. Yeah. And um, then I did re um, I went to study neurofeedback trainer. And after a few years, I noticed that I can um, train the brains so people become balanced. But sometimes they also had to learn to change some habits. And that's why I uh, combined it with uh, being a psychosocial therapist. Wonderful. And then I work with uh, more traumatized people. And you need to do some, something extra and only then neurofeedback. Yeah, and of course, coaching is so important too. So you ended up yeah. becoming a health and wellness coach, yeah. which is helping Create, really. Yeah. Yes, creating healthy habits to keep your brain sane. How would you define neurofeedback therapy? Well, neurofeedback uh, therapy is about um, training your brainwave in order for them to make beautiful music. Okay. So if you look at the brain as an orchestra, every part uh, of the orchestra has to be on the right volume, in the right um, speed, and with the right tone. And if they all work together and it's synchronized, then you have beautiful music. And it's the, the same with the brain, yeah, with the different areas in the brain, and with the different brain waves. If they are synchronized and not too loud or not too fast, then you have beautiful music in your head and you feel very well. And you can measure the way the orchestra is playing the music or the way the brain um, uh, combines the brain waves and, and how they make them. So with the neurofeedback, you give the brain the information and teach the brain to become more balanced. And um, then you feel happy and the brain is quiet and relaxed and you are relaxed. Who discovered this therapy? It was discovered in the 1960s by uh, Barry Sturman, who tr started training cats. Really? And, yeah, <laughs> he started training cats Funny. and he learned them to um, change their brain waves, mm -hmm. especially alert them to train them one uh, particular brain wave and enhance this particular area of brain waves. And the same man, he was um, testing rocket uh, uh, fluid from the NASA and he was giving that to the cats. And the cats who were trained with the brainwave um, experiment, they were not so vulnerable for epileptic seizures. Oh. 
due to the uh, toxic uh, uh, rocket fluid. And so it was like, wow, so training these brain waves gives a protection against epilepsy. And they were testing that for the first time on humans. First one human in the laboratory and it worked very well. After three months, she could drive a car, which she couldn't before. Wow. And then they tested it on 150 patients with severe epileptic. And almost all of them, they, their seizures were reduced and they were not so severe. This so that's how, it, how they discovered it. Wow. So tell me what other reasons people come to you to, for like what kind of problems do they have where they come to you for neurofeedback th therapy particularly? Uh, there are different areas of problems people come with uh, for me. It's um, the areas in the stress, uh, so with the anxiety, um, panic attacks, um, brains always thinking, uh, people who cannot sleep because of stress. So that's one part of the kind of uh, patients that come to me. The other part is more the people with traumas, uh, like PTSD or um, even physical traumas like head injuries, okay. car accidents, concussions. There it all works very well also because you solve the problem at, 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 the, at the core of the problem. Like at the cells, basically. And the yeah, waves, and, and, and it's, it's in the brain the problem. So. Tell me about the waves. What are brain waves? And why do they have to work together to be balanced? Like, why is it so important? What do you see with brain waves? When I measure brain waves and I see some imbalances, I know the kinds of problems people are encountering. I don't know the way it's originated, but I know what they are feeling right now. So, for example, if you have way too much uh, fast brain waves, then I know that people cannot stop thinking and it's like everything's rushing, rushing. It's like you are on constant stress and... And what brain wave is that called? It's the fast beta brain waves. The beta brain waves. The beta okay. brain waves. Okay. And the beta brain waves are active when you are um, looking at the outside world, when you are concentrating or performing cognitive tasks, then you need brain, uh, the beta brain waves enough. But when there are too much, it's like you cannot stop this intellectual part. So it's like you cannot stop thinking and you're constantly in a, in a hyper stress mode. And if you don't stop it, then people will become burned out. Okay. And that you can also measure because then the total amount of brain activity is really, really slow. Okay, because they're exhausted. They're, they're like, they're exhausted. That's, that's, that's a burnout in a way. That's a real burnout. <laughs> okay. I think that yeah. God, most people come when they are in the pre-phase and then there's still a lot of fast activity. And that's much, much more easier to repair than when everything is really, really gone. It's, it's like you don't have any gasoline in your car. Okay. So then you can repair the car, but you still need to put in the gasoline. Yeah. And, um, but that's when people really ignored themselves for like three, four, five years. And then would, so you have a beta and you have, a, I know, an alpha from my own. Uh -huh. What are the names of the brain waves? Uh, the delta brain waves. And these are um, dominant when you are in a deep sleep or... Okay. Del with babies, you see a lot of uh, delta brain waves. Okay. So if they can't sleep, would that brain wave be out of balance, the delta? It could be, but it could also be, also for sleep you need the delta brain waves, but also the theta brain waves. Okay. They are um, active at the point where you're really in like a trance mode or when you're uh, lucid dreaming okay. or just before you fall asleep. That's really the theta activity that's becoming dominant. And you also need alpha brain waves because the alpha brain waves, they are really for relaxing. So if you want to fall asleep, you can go from being dominant in beta to being dominant in more in alpha. Then you uh, slow down to theta brain waves. And in your deep sleep, then you have a lot of delta brain waves. That's so interesting, Debbie. Tell me something. I we hear a lot today that the blue light, which is, is affecting our eyes, and it's, it's keep, it, is this affecting our brainwaves? Yes. Too much, 
So this would be affecting our, because I know if I am on the computer and I'm doing too much of that work right before bed, it's hard to fall asleep. It makes it more difficult. I've noticed that. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, the relaxation part becomes more difficult. And that also has to do because you don't um, make the mel melatonin. It's the sleepy hormone. And your biorhythm is getting uh, mixed. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't work like it should be. So you really need to stay out of the blue light in order to create the brain waves you need to fall asleep. So this is a, like kind of an easy thing people can do if they're having trouble falling asleep to start stop watching all the electronics um, before they go to bed. That's pretty, that's like a, a habit. Yeah, that and, we can and there change. are some more uh, gadgets you can buy now because I also have the Psyo uh, classes and they um, put in a, a lot of red light. Okay. So you put on these glasses and the frequency of the light also enhances the brain waves alpha and theta. And I have um, had this for a few months and I tried it with clients and I can read and literally see on my screen that enhancement of these theta and alpha brain waves, they are going up immediately. So By wearing also, those glasses? Yes, by <laughs> putting in the red light that's because so then you, you uh, release the melatonin and you, re you release the, the, the good brain waves and then you can fall asleep. I've heard in my past work on biofeedback, where you listen to your body and you can calm it down. You can learn how to kind of help your body. And there are biofeedback ther therapists. How does that differ from neurofeedback? In a way, it's pretty much the same um, because you measure um, something it's, yeah. you can measure uh, your uh, heart um, coherence or you can measure the temperature of your fingers or you can measure brain waves and then you give feedback so on my device i can also do biofeedback and sometimes i use it with uh, clients with patients um, so it in in a way it's the same only if, in my opinion um, neurofeedback is more powerful because it's the central organ and biofeedback is more easy to do it at home so i have a, a heart coherence device people can rent it and then they can train their own uh, heart coherence at home and it helps it's like meditating it helps in the total process of healing but in, no, like I said, um, neurofeedback is the most powerful tool. So tell us, Debbie, what, what exactly do you do with neurofeedback therapy? Like, let's say the client comes in, and what is the process of it? And what are you looking for? Um, when the clients come in, before they start, I will do a big measurement. It's, it's putting on a cap, and then I measure 19 points and I will compare that to a database of uh, healthy people and that gives me the information what areas are out of balance and what brain waves are out of balance and how to train it. So that's step one. Step two is uh, really start changing the brain waves or teach the brain how to change the brain waves themselves because I don't put anything in there, I only give information. Okay. Uh, so the client, he comes, in, the patient comes in, and um, they sit on their chair. I will put on the electrodes. I will see if uh, the connection is good, and I will ask them how were the last few days? How did you sleep? Uh, how is your mind? Um, how tired were you? Did you notice anything um, starting to change? Um, how about sleep? How about mood? Um, how about your work? How about... So I, I ask all these questions to see if it's... Um, if it is too much, because it's like um, building a condition. It's the same with going to the gym. You cannot start immediately with everything, so you have to um, increase it step by step. 
and uh, I'm, when it's going very well, I make it a little bit more heavy and a little bit more difficult. So to create the optimum, optimal um, learning curve. For Not the too brain. much, so for the, the brain. So the balance. Yeah. So to help all those brain waves kind of work together instead yes. of one becoming too dominant and then the and taking over pretty much <laughs> and then causing this burnout that we talked about. Yeah. If, if we look at the choir of uh, like the orchestra, mm -hmm. it's like you put on all these microphones and you let the orchestra hear it in, uh, themselves so they can correct them themselves. And um, that's the way we do it with uh, neurofeedback. That's so beautiful. It's almost like at some point they were working together. So something came and the frequency changed, maybe too much stress or whatever you're talking about in the lifestyle. And mm -hmm. then over time, these things just get blocked. So Debbie, you've been speaking about how important the brain waves are and how important the neurofeedback um, therapy is to help these brain waves become in sync with how they should perform in the brain so that, you're, that you feel good. What else is influencing the health of the brain? Well, if you look at the different parts of our brain, you, uh, you can see the reptilian brain, and this is more connected to our basic functions, our fight and flight systems. Um, then we have the part of the emotional brain. And the emotional brain, that's where our memories are um, for, emo for emotional uh, events that happens to us. And these two parts of the brain are the more primitive and the more older parts of the brain. And when you look at people, when they are reacting from uh, fear or from fight or flight reactions, they are uh, operating from that part of their brain. And that part of the brain is mostly uh, subconscious and these are where the habits are rooted. So that's why when these parts are so active, overly active, it's very difficult to show different behavior. So when you are um, challenged, you will always do the same thing and you will act from fear and avoidance instead of from possibilities. So when you are amygdalas, for example, that's, uh, there's two organs in your emotional uh, brain, they act like smoke detectors. And with some people, they are really sensitive. So every time they give an alarm and every time, at every time all these stress hormones, they get released. And with neurofeedback, you can desensitize and you can teach this part of the, uh, the brain to become more... Like so demanding. Like so demanding okay. and, and, and taking everything over. Then you want to awaken your neocortex where more your logical thinking is and um, reflection and how can I do, can do uh, things in a different way, in a new way, and thinking in possibilities. And feeling, for example, what you want. Because when people don't feel what they want, because they've shut down all their feelings, because there's so much trauma in the brain, they stop feeling it, but they also stop feeling what they want. And then people come to me, I don't know what I want. What should I choose? That's oh. so interesting. I'm wondering about something, so I'm just going to kind of put it together. So you're saying now that, it's, that when these parts of the brain are overactive, there's usually fear and resistance in one's life. So people are just very, um, they're usually showing up too very unhappy. They don't feel like they know where they're going and they feel completely stressed out actually. Mm -hmm. And when you can explain to them that when you do the neurofeedback, it will help these areas to work more together yes. and remember how they should work and then they won't be so dominant, then the conscious state or our neocortex state will be able to have a moment to see things that it couldn't see before. Is that correct, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, wonderful. And then there's room to change and to grow. Debbie, I'm just wondering, can you see on the feedback, when you look at the brain waves, can you see if somebody is living from fear and or from love? Because we have choices every day, how, what state we wanna 
or we can live in. And sometimes we don't realize we have this choice. But I know with myself, if I take time to meditate and do all the good things, and I can be much more patient and loving. And But would you be able to see that? Yeah, when I do a measurement and I see these overactive fast beta waves, then I know there is a problem with or fear or um, anxiety or anger. And anger is fear only with power. Okay. So, and if those are just very calm, then I see there is that loving and acceptance state people are in. Great. So, so yes. when people come to you for therapy, do they become in more of a loving state? Is that what can happen? Yes. They start loving themselves more, but also their surrounding will be much more friendly and less hostile because what they uh, send out, they will receive it. Oh, nice. And then they come to me, well, I don't know if it works because they still feel the same, but I don't have any argu arguments with my boss or <laughs> my son, <laughs> he funny. listens to me much easier yeah. or, or my husband, he's... Well, I like him much more. So all these little things start to change. Wonderful. Not only in themselves, but also in, in how people react to them and in their surroundings. That's so amazing. Tell me a little bit about trauma, because you hear about trauma in all levels. Body, you know, like you said, people have had car accidents or traumatizing things happen, like maybe rapes or whatever they've had. You also have trauma, you know, just neglect when you're a child or things that happen, particularly before the age of seven. Tell me how, do you help clients with these issues? I think neurofeedback is one of the best therapies to start with when people encounter trauma. And it doesn't matter if it's a physical trauma, especially a physical trauma on the head, you can help uh, very well uh, with neurofeedback, but also the emotional trauma. And because you train the subconscious brain, you don't have to put words in it. So especially with traumas, which happened while you were, uh, before you were seven, um, or even when you were in the womb, or when you are during um, um, surgery, even then traumas can occur, but you cannot talk about it. No. But with brainwave therapy, you can um, help discharge this, uh, this emotional load from is it, the brain. Is it a cell memory that you're getting rid of? Yes. Or are you, okay, so you're just actually asking the body to release that memory. You're giving information to the brain and the body to do it themselves. So it's like this um, event is linked to an emotional state. They are connected. And if you don't use it, you lose it. So yeah. this connection can disappear. And that's what you're doing with neurofeedback, is they don't forget things, but they are not linked to future events. And They're not like triggers. You get rid of the trigger, it sounds like. So like in yes. life, we go through life and we've had a trauma. And then you keep reliving it because it's linked to that emotion. So if you can reprogram and get rid of the link between the actual the trigger between the trauma and the emotion then you still might have the memory but it doesn't make the emotional connection is that exactly. what i'm getting okay exactly all right you release the trauma network from the event wonderful this is yes. amazing i never i never understood it and i love how you explain it thank you so debbie tell me a little bit about your clients that come to you you mentioned a few things like stress and but what other um, problems do they come besides the trauma and all of these things we've discussed so far? Well, since the brain is the central organ, uh, which has a big influence of how, on how we feel, um, you can use it for a lot of types of clients. And people come, f the, er the youngest client I had was a little girl of five years old. And uh, well, you can use it until people, as long as they have a sane brain and, and they have a consciousness, you can train them. 
So I believe the oldest man that was trained was like 92. Wow. Not in my practice, but my <laughs> teacher, he trained okay. a man of 92 wow. with, with great um, effect. So um, The youngest girl that was in my practice was five years old. And uh, the problems children, children come when they arrive is um, ADHD, ADD and concentration problems. And also sometimes uh, being uh, overwhelmed by information very soon. So like a behavioral reaction, over, overly? Yes. Like maybe they act out or they're very angry or they're, yes. and there's no reason. Yes. Wow. So what can you do for those clients? Especially so many kids today have ADHD. Like it seems like every other child. So what, how can you help them? Uh, from scientific research, it has shown that it is just as effective as, for example, medicines like Ritalin or these kinds of medicines. Uh, with one difference, um, the pill only works for a few hours and when neurofeedback works, it's for good. And sometimes they come back for two, three times a year. It's like maintenance. But when they achieved, they have achieved it. And people, the, the parents say they are much more calm. They sleep very well on the schools. They are very happy because yeah. the children, they, they perform so much better. Wow. And of course, there's also adults with ADHD. So they, do you see those, yes. them old, when they're older? Okay. ADHD, ADD, uh, depression. Oh, yeah. And anxiety. Uh, you and anxiety. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Yeah, wonderful. So tell me a little bit about how else you help them, like stress. How does that directly, because we're all, my goodness, look at the world today. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so stressful. So do people just come like and say, look, I'm just so stressed out. I can't cope anymore. Yes. And then you give them a couple treatments and they. Yes. So how um, many? And sometimes they come through uh, their uh, employers. So um, when one of them really has a good effect, then uh, the company says, well, you have to go there because that okay. works. And for them, it's also good because um, your stress levels, they go down. Uh, but I also give them some extra information uh, when they're really stressed out. So uh, I give them guidelines on what to do with sleep, what to do with physical activity, what to do with food, for example. Awesome. Because you need to create the optimal circumstances for change to happen. And if they um, keep doing what they were always doing, oh, there is no change. Yeah. Then yeah. I, I can help them, but they will come back yeah. a few years so later. So the behavioral change, also what their, their lifestyle choices really yes. make a difference. So That's because why we I wanted to become yeah. also a health and wellness coach. Yeah, of course. And give them the tools they need to keep their own brains very healthy. Tell me a little bit like how you explain to your clients, for instance, how good or bad nutrition affects their brain directly, because that's pretty important. Yes. And I can see if people are uh, not eating very healthy, they miss building blocks. So you can give the brain the information and it wants to change, but it doesn't have the building blocks to change. And the building blocks, these are the foods that we eat and the thoughts that we think and the people we surround us with. So it's like the primary and the secondary foods. So they are very, very important. Um, and also exercise is very important. It's, it's keeping the brain healthy. Everything, everywhere the blood goes, there the nutrition goes and, and oxygen, oxygen goes. Of course, and yeah. That's so important. Yeah. yeah, I think sometimes people feel already better when they just start moving. <laughs> they, yes. they just, they have been in the office, they've been behind these computers working for hours and then they feel horrible. Yes. And then they just go out and they walk in nature or they start to move and they, that already makes the brain healthier and the thoughts different, doesn't it? It affects us on all levels. Like for example, I had a, a patient in my practice and he was very overwhelmed at work, stressed out and he needed to set boundaries. So with neurofeedback, I really got him into balance. But then you really need to learn to set your boundaries yeah. for the future. So we worked yeah. on that through uh, the therapy 
And I also gave him advice to do something with sport and, and, and feeling very strong. So he texted me that he started doing boxing. Oh, great. It's also feeling <laughs> strong. When yeah. you feel strong on a physical level, yeah. you always feel, also feel strong on a mental level. Yeah, that's, they go together. They go together. Yeah. Wow. So it's yeah. always a, like a cooperation together. It's not like I'm the therapist and I tell them what to do. No, we have to find what your path is, what, you, what, what works for you. So many people suffer with addictions, whether it's smoking or drinking or sometimes, you know, drugs or, or sex or all kinds of addictions. Do you help people with these problems? Yes. Now, actually, people help to help themselves with uh, those kind of problems. But what you see with these addictions is they occur when people are stressed out. So, again, when your reptilian brain, where your habits are seated, and your emotional brain, uh, when they are overactive and they're in this stress kind of state, then you really need these addictions and they can be habits, they can be thoughts, um, they can be substances. It doesn't matter. It's in, in, in origin, it's all the same. So when these parts of your brains are overactive and your neocortex is, well, you cannot hear yourself think no. uh, the good thoughts, that's when people are getting, um, cannot stop their addiction. With neurofeedback, when everything calms down, that's when change happens. Most of the time people know that they need to stop the addiction. They just don't know how to do it. Yeah, of course. It's so and difficult. that's because in, 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 when you're in this fight or flight reaction or in this avoidance, that's when all your habits, they, they hijacked you. Yeah, they've taken over. Yeah, they've taken yeah. over. Yeah, okay. So when everything calms down and your brain works synchronized and people start feeling well, most of the time, uh, all these bad habits, they stop. It's so interesting. And it's people like, well, normally I will do this and this, but, well, I don't feel like it anymore. Interesting. <laughs> and they don't that's have cool. to do anything about it. Yeah. It just happens. And that's so great. Yeah, and I know we teach, for instance, that it takes 21 days at least to change a habit. Like, you don't miss it any, as much, right, after so much time. You, the first days you're like, sure, you know, I need that. And you need the coffee and you need, but after a while you, you need it less because you filled it in with other things. I've noticed that with working with clients. So it's so powerful, this work you're doing. I'm so impressed. It's beautiful. Yeah. If somebody was interested in coming and like, how long did it take for you to learn this, how to do this with a, your clients, neurofeedback therapy? And where would people get trained? There are different uh, companies that will uh, give neurofeedback um, lessons. Um, for me, it took about a year to really become a neurofeedback trainer and working with the more difficult um, uh, clients, patients, like really PTSD or uh, heavy trauma. Yeah. That took me another few years. Yeah, because you went back to school for that, you said. Yes, I went yeah. back to school, but also with uh, uh, how do you see all the finesses in, in working with brain? Uh, when is it too much or yeah. when is it too little? That's something that, that you're doing it. Yeah. That's why the, when you will become more an expert. Awesome. But if, after, after one year, you can do the basic stuff like the stressed out people and, and the sleeping problems and the children with the concentration problems or the diagnosis That's they have. That's wonderful. You can really help a lot of people. Oh. So Debbie, this has been so fascinating. I've loved it. I learned so much myself today. Thank you. I just have one last question. Where do you see yourself and the field of neurofeedback going in the future? For myself, I, I want to keep um, adding new tools for people to find their way into balance and, and health and optimal well-being. So my personal adventure, uh, my quest, uh, it never stops. Oh, nice. Um, and there are always going to be new tools that you can um, help people with, like, like the psycho classes, for example. I give them to people to work uh, on them at home. And that's also in the field of neurofeedback. 
that's where the future is. Because the one-on-one -on -one sessions are very expensive, of course, and very time-consuming. And neurofeedback works best when trained a lot. So the, they are now working on devices that people can use at home. So um, you rent a device, you train yourself, um, and after one week you come to the practice. Oh, and then we look at the results and I will set the device a little bit different so you can do a lot of the training at home. Oh, but and that's that nice. So yes. that takes less of your time. Less of my time, and less of their time, and, and whole yeah. families can be done. And I know, for instance, you said exercise and all these other things help. And also, I know for myself, meditation is so powerful. For instance, I people can be totally anxious, and then they learn meditation. It makes a difference. And you would see those differences also in their, in their readings when yes. they would start to learn maybe mindfulness or meditation also. Those yeah. are very, you probably help people with that also. That's nice. Meditation changes your brain waves. Yeah. Um, some of my protocols, my training protocols are like meditative sessions. They are done with eyes closed and about enhancing theta and alpha brain waves. Um, and my teacher, he uh, has measured and trained uh, Tibetan monks. And they are masters at meditation, and they have totally different brain waves. Amazing! So. Wow, that's so that's so strong. And and we know now the power physically, emotionally, and mentally of meditation. It really makes a difference in one's health. So, Debbie, will you show us a session today? We would love to see how you do this work. Yes, I'm looking forward to because one picture says more than all my words together. Hello, Hello, Jeff. Very Hello. welcome. <laughs> Thank Come you. Come in. Thank you. So, Jeff, um, I will do a measurement, a QEEG measurement, and that means that I will measure you four times five minutes. Five minutes with your eyes closed, five minutes with your eyes open. Uh, five minutes while reading a text and five minutes while looking at a movie. And your results will be compared to a database and, and then we can see where your brain activ activity is too much or too little and in which part of the brain it is. Mm -hmm. And also we can see um, how your brain is connected. And if they are connected too much in some parts, or there's li too little connection. Now, if you please close your eyes, I will start the measurement. Okay. So, what you see here is the result of the measurement. And all these 19 lines are the 19 points on the scope that are measured. What you see here is the black line is the average of healthy people. And here you can already see some problems because this some is... falling outside the range there. Yeah. Here you see that you can, cannot handle stress that well no. anymore. This is in the frontal lobes. So that means excessive thinking and sleep problems. This is really a pattern related to sleep problems. Mm. Okay, Jeff, can you please tell me how was your last week? Uh, pretty okay, a little bit stressful. But mm -hmm. yeah. And um, how was the sleeping since we started with neurofeedback? Uh, pretty steady. I think maybe too short, but, uh, but, but deep. deep mm -hmm. Okay, well, once the neurofeedback gets starting to work, you will notice that uh, your sleeping quality improves because your stress hormones are lower. Um, your sleeping will become, uh, hours become longer and you'll feel um, more rested when you wake up. And how about the thoughts in your mind? Is it quiet or is it, uh, do you have a lot of thoughts? It's mostly quiet, I'd say, no. Okay, well, um, that gives me the information. And, and uh, after the last session, were you tired or...? No, not particularly. Okay. 
Then I can do the full session uh, today. Yeah, I'm up for it. Okay. <laughs> When I do a session, first I will put on the electrodes. It's very important that you place the electrode on the skin. And the protocol I'm using right now is the protocol for relaxation, improving the flexibility of the brain, improving the way you can handle stress, improving sleep patterns, and improving relaxation. It's about stabilizing the central nervous system. And it works by enhancing the SMR, which is very important for uh, being able to handle stress and for sleep, and lowering the fast beta brain waves, the high beta brain waves, and the very slow brain waves. And then I'm going to check the connection of the electrodes. Well, there's a perfect connection. So here you see Jeff's brain waves being recorded live. Um, these are the very slow brain waves we want to inhibit. These are the very fast brain waves we want to inhibit. And this is the frequency we want to enhance. And these red lines, they are the bandwidth. So now I will start the movie. And looking at the movie is just the reward of looking at the screen. And it's about distracting our conscious mind. Our conscious mind um, delivers only 5% of the brain waves. 95% of the brain waves are subconscious. So by thinking, you cannot change your brain waves. Be distracted thinking by uh, letting them look at a nice movie. So, Jeff, please look at the screen. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Don't think about it. Don't try to do your best. That will only. That's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard for most uh, adults. But the more you can let it happen, the better it goes. Okay. This border that opens up and closes in reaction to your brain waves. And the sound will go be go up and go down also according to your brain wave. If your brains are making beautiful music, you will be rewarded with the total screen. And the way that will become a little bit out of balance, then it will close down. And your brain waves are during this border. I will put on some music. Now sit back and relax. Let it happen. During the neurofeedback, I can look at my screen and there are all the different brain waves so I can see what is happening if a patient gets tired or gets stressed out or gets distracted. How am I doing? You're doing perfect. It's now smaller. But it's only because you're talking that he's closing down. Here you're looking at the theta brain waves, and the green ones are the beta one. Your stress waves, they have become better, and that's okay. Um, I can show you pictures where this pink line is like two times as high, and then there are people who are really stressed out. So you've made a lot of progress. The level you have achieved, Uh, step by step, your brain will improve the brain waves and you will start feeling more like yourself without all, like, all kinds of distractions or clouds in your head. And um, every time you come here, I will make it a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. So that there will always be enough to learn. Yeah. You can never stop learning with uh, enhancing or <laughs> improving your brain waves. Room for improvement there. There's always room for improvement for everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing.